Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, I had a request. Uh, Craig Gilbreth saw my old video um, where I mentioned my remote tuning for the uh, magnetic loop, and he wanted more detail on that project, uh, schematic and more information breakdown on the control box. This is the control box. It allows me to uh, turn a loop in one direction or the other. It has feedback that shows me power coming out of the loop so that I can fine tune it more easily. We'll get into that in detail in a moment. So uh, sure, Craig, no problem. I've drawn up a schematic and we will go through it uh, one phase at a time, one section at a time, and I'll explain how the uh, remote tuning box works for the loop and we'll uh, demo it as well. Uh, but before we get into that, I wanted to take a quick moment uh, to comment on Patreon uh, and the people that have signed up to help support my channel. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm unemployed at the moment. I'm barely getting by and every little bit uh, helps and uh, certainly helps me to uh, continue to make videos and uh, spend time on this project. So uh, to my Patreon uh, patrons, thank you very much. It's greatly appreciated. I notice every single one of you that donates. And if you want to see something specific and you want to make a request, obviously the uh, people that support the channel will get priority. Um, Craig, anyway, to you, well, here we go. The uh, magnetic loop uh, control box and how it works. This is my magnetic loop. It's a three foot diameter loop uh, built on a PVC framework made out of copper tubing. And this is the tuning assembly here that we'll be talking about. Now, the uh, tuning capacitor I uh, picked up at a ham fest or I think got from a friend maybe. It's been a while. Um, the tuning capacitor, uh, since I'm motorizing it, uh, I wanted one without end stops. There's no end stops on these plates. This capacitor can rotate 360 degrees continuous uh, without stopping. That's kind of important because uh, if you have an end stop on these plates, on, like so, you see on some capacitors, you would need to engineer some kind of limit switch so that your motor doesn't torque against that end stop and break the capacitor. It's much easier to have a capacitor that can just rotate continuously in 360 degrees and uh, not have to um, stop physically. Um, safer that way. Uh, the motor, I got this one from uh, Servo City uh, off the uh, internet. And it's a 12 volt motor. It's uh, I think rated at, uh, let's see here, one RPM which means at 12 volts, it will take one full minute for this thing to make a, a complete 360 degrees. Um, that does mean that if you have to tune from one end of the capacitor's range to the other, you're gonna be tuning for 30 seconds. Uh, 180 degrees rotation on the capacitor will go from the plates being fully meshed to fully open. So it would take 30 seconds to go from one end of the range to the other at, at full speed. Uh, that's a little while if you're QSYing from the top end of the range to the bottom. Um, but, you know, you really want it slow. You want it to be very slow because the fine-tuning uh, is so, so very sensitive. I mean, you can move that capacitor a hair's breadth and you'll be shifting the tuning quite a bit. So you really want a slow motor. So I got one that's 1 RPM. It's worked out pretty good. Um, this is a plastic coupling between the capacitor shaft and the motor shaft. You want something non-conductive here and stiff. You don't want any play. I tried to use rubber tubing uh, to couple it and there was just too much play in it. I could not make any fine adjustments. So you want a solid mechanical connection. Uh, I 3D printed this coupling. Um, uh, you have to come up with something yourself that uh, is gonna, gonna make a nice rigid connection between the capacitor shaft and the motor. You also wanna make sure that those two shafts are parallel. You don't want them at any angle at all because you don't want the capacitor to wobble or be torqued against when the motor is turning. You want that to be nice and straight. Now, over here is a remote sensing um, assembly for this. My control box has feedback on the radiated power from the loop. So RF coming off of the loop is picked up by this little bitty wire here. Let me zoom in for a close-up. Okay, so what we have here is a little terminal strip and two germanium diodes. And these diodes pick up the RF that this little piece of wire is picking up here from the loop and rectify it into DC voltage, 
which then gets sent back on the control cable to the control box. And that allows me to see a visual indication of how much RF the loop is emitting. And it's a much more precise way of fine tuning the loop for maximum output. You'll see that when I demo the box. And it's, believe me, it's a much better way than just using the SWR indicator on your radio. You can get very fine and you can get every single milliwatt possible out of that loop when you're fine tuning it. And uh, that really counts when you're doing QRP. So that's the, the mechanical side of it here at the loop end. Now the control box, we'll go take a look at the schematic for that. Okay, this is the schematic for my remote uh, tuning for the magnetic loop. I uh, will, uh, oops, okay, well, let's go in here a little bit. All right, there we go. We'll take a look at this. Um, we've already looked at the mechanical side of things. Uh, over here, these are the things on the loop. Um, we've got obviously the DC motor. And this uh, 0 0.01 capacitor here is for eliminating brush noise from the motor. That's important. Uh, the brushes on the motor will arc and spark and make all kinds of hash noise that would make it hard to, find, to uh, do the uh, tuning. Um, when you gross tune the loop initially, you tune up and down until you hear the static on the radio peak. You hear the sound come up and that's how you know you're close and it would be hard to hear that static if you had all kinds of hash noise from the motor. So this capacitor eliminates brush noise from the motor. And then the uh, motor's wires go down the control cable to the control box. This is that pickup wire that I mentioned uh, n that's near the loop. You want it about two, an inch or two away from the uh, loop, and it's very short. It's about an inch. It doesn't take much because there's a lot of RF present when that loop is operating. And here's our diodes, and you can see that we have a... Uh, full wave rectification going on here. Um, the RF coming through gets separated out into ground and a positive voltage that goes back to the uh, box. Again we have a small capacitor here and this is to bleed off the RF that might be still present on this side of the diodes. All we want is this DC voltage, this DC rectified voltage going back uh, down the control cable. We don't want an RF um, radiating on that control cable so that's what that capacitor is for. And then you'll have a four wire or more control cable that goes from the loop along the coax, outside of the coax, to the control box. Uh, one of those wires will be a ground, and uh, this on the, on the loop side will simply connect here to the uh, negative of the diode uh, so that you have a, a ground all the way down to the uh, meter. Now, over in the control box, first off, the uh, sensing meter. Now this is a fairly standard setup for a controllable meter. Um, the positive of the meter goes to a potentiometer so you can adjust its sensitivity. And then in one side of the potentiometer you have this signal that's coming from the diode here. right? So that's the signal connection from the diodes to the uh, potentiometer for the meter. This allows you to adjust it so you're not banging the meter uh, against the end um, when you're, uh, you're fine-tuning. Now, the uh, meat of the matter, the motor control, okay? What we have here is we have two relays that are um, set up to send voltages down to the motor. Now, if you look, the center connection of each relay uh, goes to the motor. One side comes through a switch. Now, this is a speed control. When the switch is engaged over here, the motor is connected directly to its power source and will run at full speed. When the uh, switch is uh, connected over here, we're feeding the motor through a resistor and that makes uh, a voltage divider and lowers the amount of power that's getting through to the motor and it runs at a slower speed. Now this resistor's value is going to vary depending upon your motor. Um, one guideline or one way you can do it is you can take an ohm meter and you can measure the resistance of the motor and then if that's say 300 ohms make this a 300 ohm resistor and you'll be effectively cutting in half the amount of power going to the motor and then see how well it turns. What you want to do is you want to find a resistor value here that will make your motor turn much slower yet still provide enough power so the motor has enough torque to turn the capacitor so it's kind of a balance. Um, I won't bother telling you what value I arrived at because that value was specific to my motor. You'll have to experiment 
to find the value that allows your motor to turn slowly without um, stopping. So I'll leave that up to you. Now the way these reversing switches work, here's a push button here for up or down and another one up here. Now what these push buttons do, when you press one of these, it fires off this relay. You can see voltage is coming into one side of the relay, comes through the push button to ground. Um, the relays, by default, the normally closed contact, are connected to the plus 12 volts coming in. So when neither relay is turned on, both motor lines are at plus 12 volts. If you push this button and you fire off this relay, that swings the contact over and switches this motor line to ground. And at that point the motor then runs because this side is plus 12 volts and this side is ground. If you push this button, this relay switches over and takes this motor line to ground and the motor runs in the opposite direction because now this is at positive and that is at, at ground. If you accidentally push both buttons at the same time, both sides of the motor are just switched to negative and the motor doesn't move. So this way you can have an up and a down direction uh, with push buttons without having to uh, worry about shorting anything out when you, if you accidentally press them both. So that's how it works. It's very, very simple. Um, this is basically a big reversing switch. You push this, and the motor goes in one direction. You push this, and the motor goes in the other direction. You flip that switch to slow to slow the motor down for fine tuning. It's, uh, it's pretty straightforward. So uh, pause the video here, or take a screen capture. Um, shift print screen under Windows and under Linux will uh, save you a picture of your, uh, your video image. Um, and you'll have the schematic, but it's, it's like I say, it's very straightforward. So that is how the uh, control box is wired for my remote tuning. Now let's do a demonstration. So to demonstrate this, I've got the uh, magnetic loop hooked up to my little Yezu FT817. And this is the control box sitting here. Now for the interconnect, uh, the control cable down to my magnetic loop, I used a uh, Ethernet cable and a Cat5 connector. It was just convenient for me. On the side of the box I have the connector mounted and I can simply plug in the loop like so. Uh, power for the uh, control box I have on a couple of alligator clips and I just clip these on to a battery or to my uh, power source that the radio is running off of. And then uh, we're ready to operate the loop. Now if I uh, push one button you can see it moves in one direction. I push the other button it moves in the other direction. Alright, presently I'm on 40 meters. Make sure I'm on a quiet area. And low power, okay. Um, First you want to, at high speed, you want to grossly tune the loop and you want to listen to the static. So hopefully you can hear that. Okay, as you could hear, I found a spot where the static came way up. That's closely tuned now. To fine tune it, I'm going to put my switch in slow speed and uh, let's see, CW mode. Okay. I'm pretty close. The SWR indicator on the AZU is, is showing uh, one to one, so I'm pretty close. But I don't know if I'm perfectly on. Now, watch that meter. You can see it's going up to four. Ah. See if I tap that just a little bit further. Oh, went too far. There we go. So you can see that even though the SWR indicator on the Yezu was showing that I was matched, I was still able to squeeze a little bit more out of that. So uh, let's detune it a bit and we'll do this again. Okay, so now you can see I, I moved it a bit and I've got some SWR indicating on the Yezu, right? So right there you would think you were tuned. Yeah, we're pretty close. I stopped it right. But you can see that I could actually get I can get to where the Yezu says that we're good, but we're still not quite 
all the way there. I can just get a little bit more out of that, uh, out of that loop. So that's where that fine tuning with the diodes and this meter really come in handy for just for precisely tuning your loop for the maximum possible uh, output power. So that's my remote tuning system for my magnetic loop. So there you go, Craig. I hope that uh, answers your question and gives you the information that you needed. Uh, if there's uh, more detail that you would like, or uh, if anybody needs the, uh, would like me to email them the schematic, um, I've saved it out as a file. I'll uh, send it right off to you. It's a JPEG. Anybody can uh, uh, can view it. Um, in fact, I'll put this on the Facebook page, uh, a link to this video and the schematic itself. So if you hop over to uh, the Facebook page at uh, facebook.com slash kb9rlw, you'll find the schematic for the uh, control box there, and you can download it yourself, print it out, and then build your own. Um, there's all kinds of ways that you could improve this. Uh, I used relays for uh, controlling the motor. I thought of a way that you could do it with using a couple of transistors, well, four transistors, uh, PNP and NPN transistors in a, in a complementary pair as a push-pull kind of configuration um, where the push buttons turn on the transistors and then they would do the same job as the relays. So it could be done solid state. Uh, I worry about that configuration though because if the transistors don't come on and go off precisely together uh, they could create a current loop themselves through the transistors and they could pop so <laughs> I decided to go with relays. I like relays. They're more robust um, and they're just going to hold up. It, it, plus you're not too, you don't have to worry too much about the current. Now the motor's not going to draw much current, maybe 80 milliamps or so. Um, it's geared down tremendously so it doesn't have a lot of torque on the motor itself so it doesn't draw much current. Uh, but I like to use the relays. And they're pretty common. They're pretty easy to find. Um, so anyway, I hope that was helpful. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, in the comments below or on the Facebook page, and uh, we can talk about it. 73s. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.